For most of my life, I've been a chef, a DJ, and a grower. Nothing makes me happier than good cuisine, great music, and excellent flour. Join me on an adventure as we dig into cannabis culture. My name is Cameron, and this is Deep Roots. So, you guys all started on the forums. Yeah. I see Mag, that was kind of Well, your... we started sharing tech and like upgrading our fucking tech. This shit was passed down, you know, like yeah. from where we are in our culture, it's baked in. Like from Reading, it's like, it's not in the Emerald Triangle, but like it's where is maybe, Reading? it's like two and a half hours south of the Oregon border. But the significance of it is that the growers would take their packs to Reading and sit in hotels and sell them. The buyers will go to Reading to buy the weed. Mm -hmm. That's why it, it, it's significant. It's not in the Emerald Triangle, but like it is. It's the that first, was the it's brokerage. The first stop. Yeah. yeah, it's because like the no brokerage. Because no one wants trouble. to drive the windy road and up the mountain. Reading is a poor place. To be at the level that we're at, like this is insane. Yeah, We're probably one of a handful of uh, cannabis businesses that are profitable. You know? And that's Alien Labs. And Connected. And Connected. So yeah, how, connected how like did you guys get oh, okay. connected to Connected <laughs> here? In uh, Sacramento, there's a legendary cannabis club called Collective Efforts. Okay. Um, it, at first it was called Fruit Ridge Health and Wellness. When I was first starting, I would go there and vend. You know, I would try and, I would try and vend, actually, excuse me. I, he would just look at it, it was super fire, better than anything they had, and he'd be like, no, sorry. And it was good price, too. I, I knew how much they were paying, and I, it was way less, so I was like, we're good, you know. When I would go to SAC from Reading to Vin, I would also hit up this clothing store that I liked, and uh, the same girl would always help me. She was the manager. And I was like, yeah, like, the guy just won't let me in. Like, the weed's fire. He just, in this time, in this industry, too, like, if you were put into a position like that, you kind of, like, got an ego. Mm -hmm. Like, nine times out of ten, you were just like, oh, I'm cool. I'm the buyer at the coolest club. Like, right. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's hell how it was. Much more subtly, but, you know. So I told her what the name of the club was. She said, yeah, my neighbor owns that place. And I was like, no way. I'll give you a $1,000 if you give me his phone number. <laughs> and she's she, like, fuck, all right. She took a K? Oh, yeah, she took a K. <laughs> so I hit the guy up. Oh, this is Caleb. So this is how me and oh, Caleb met. Oh, shit. I went in, I showed him the weed. He loved it. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll take all your weed. And then once Prop 64 rolled along, um, you know, it turns out you you do need a fucking ton of money. Like you. That How much are we talking about? Have. I mean, a At million the time. bucks. A million bucks flat. Thank you. To get in, not building out. Wow. You know, talking with Caleb, I was like, fuck, man. I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to like transition. You know? Yeah. Like, oh well, we can't have that. Like, we need your weed. So they put us in a spot and licensed us. You know, they we started working together and we went from 60 to 180 lights. And uh, that's where we sit now. Still rocking the same setup. 180 still. Yeah. Well, Ted, it was really awesome hanging out and really enjoying the meal with you and hearing your backstory. Nick and I have been talking about Alien Labs and what you guys have brought to the industry. So this is uh, pretty special for us. We're yeah. looking forward to it. Fuck yeah, thank you. I wish uh, the rest of our team could be here. You know, I'm just one of a great spoke in the cog. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah. You know, thanks for being out here. Thanks for having us. Hell yeah. yeah. And next up, we'll go to California, yeah, California and film that. For sure, we need that. Yeah. So Caleb, you are one of the co-founders of Connected Cannabis, and I'm real interested in learning about how Connected Cannabis, which started in California, has led all the way to this genetic vault here in Arizona. 
guess you could go all back all the way back to when I was selling weed when I was 12. But <laughs> in the legal business, uh, I opened my first dispensary in the city of Sacramento, California, 2009. Shortly thereafter, got into cultivation out of a need to supply high quality flower on somewhat of a consistent basis. It was real spotty back then. I had one of my friends who's a good grower mentor me and my team through the process. And we're still using some of the same techniques today. That's super cool. So your methodology at Connected, how different is it than the methodology at Alien? And how have you guys been able to integrate uh, as you come together? So at Connected, we started in 2015 with our first breeding program. We decided from here on out, we're gonna develop our own proprietary genetics. We launched Gushers and Biscotti, two hit strains, some of the most popular and sought after strains still to this day. Alien Labs has been always good at finding genetics or finding seeds. So we've sort of merged the two methodologies and now we have a breeding program that'll be launching almost all of both um, companies' products. Okay, cool. So how many strains do you think we've got in here? I think we have just under 20 in here, but in Connected and Alien Labs total portfolio, we have a, over 175 phenotypes of various crosses. And how are those kept? Are those kept in tissue culture? It's just sort of suspended in perpetuity or? So we have about 50 to 60 kept in tissue culture. And then the rest, we just keep them essentially really tiny little moms until we can run them through the commercial process to determine if they're commercially viable. Got it. Well, Caleb, can we go take a closer look at uh, what some of what you got in here? Yeah. Can you tell me maybe about a couple of your favorite strains and how one might fit with Alien slightly better than it maybe fits with Connected or vice versa? Gelinate is really my my favorite flavor of the of the month for Connected. Okay. We cross Gelato 41 with Lemon Tree. It's got that real bright lemon flavor mm -hmm. on the inhale mm -hmm. with that smooth creamy gelato on the exhale. Got it. Cherbaccio for Alien is a cross between Sunset Sherbert and Gelato 41. And Ted, the founder of Alien Labs, he specifically hunted through about 30 different phenos to find the one. Their fan base just absolutely loves it. Sure, and so those are gonna be your flagship strains, at least at the moment here, yep. uh, as you're making this new break into, into Arizona. Yep. And what do you think the, the future, like let's say what the next like year or two is gonna look like as you uh, start to settle down roots here in Arizona? Um, we're already looking for expansion opportunities. We are expanding within the building that we're in, and we're in negotiations for a couple of other properties. Um, when our products hit the shelves on Friday at the Harvest locations, there was lines around the block. We knew coming into it that there was gonna be a warm welcome to Connected and Alien Labs, but it was more like a flaming hot welcome. It That's was awesome. Like, we're, we're killing it. That's awesome. Well, dude, warm receptions are great, uh, and I'm just so happy to hear that you guys have been so well received here. So. Uh, I think the future is bright. Right on, I agree. Thanks for showing me prop. Why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about your backstory and how you got involved with uh, Connected and Alien Labs? Sure, so uh, I'm actually originally from Florida. That's actually where I grew up. Uh, I went to school out there. I have a background in plant sciences. I got into the industry 2016, 2017, uh, and been honestly growing cannabis since 2011. Okay. So it was uh, you know, really nice for me to finally actually make my way into the industry, which is what I had always intended. And more recently jumped on board with Alien Labs and Connected. That's awesome. So why don't we talk about what we've got going on here? You've got, I don't know, roughly 2,000 clones in a room that could probably hold double that. What's your uh, process? What, what does that look like? Right now we're putting about 500 uh, plants into each room. Uh, we cut at least 20% overage on top of that. So we're always hedging our bets, making sure that the best material goes into the room. Selection is very, very important to us. But it's a pretty straightforward process, you know? Uh, we take our cuts from our mom plants, they get the Clonex gel treatment, they make their way into the rock wool slab where they sit there for two weeks. And we just basically control the environment they're in uh, and baby them along until they get their roots underneath them. Once they get their roots, then we move them onto that pre-veg. You mentioned that you use Clonex. Uh, is that a product that you've always used in your career? Is it the, the only product that you use here at Alien and Connected? So that's correct. Actually, um, you know, I have a background in plant sciences. I've used a whole lot of plant hormones in my past, but I have, over the course of my career in the cannabis industry, really stuck to Clonex. Um, it's just a very consistent product. You see it used very widely across the industry, and you know, it's for a reason, right? It's become the standard in the industry. 
uh, and it's just very you know easy to use and I feel like I can trust it. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, it's, it's, it's such an industry standard, you know, it's pretty easy to knock it out of the park with Clonex. Sure. Yeah. From here, once the plants are rooted in, ready to go, we make it over to our pre-vegging area. Okay. So that's the next step. Conveniently right behind this door, so it makes the labor flow nice and easy. They're not, they're not as, you know, left field. They're just kind of you know, yeah. tr traditional, light. Like yeah, center. totally. Yeah. That's the wrong bag for carrots. <laughs> Do you have anything that pairs well with a hangover? Yes, everything pairs well with a hangover. What well, pairs well with a, a blunt full of gelato right now? <laughs> so this is our pre-veg room. Right now what we're looking at is our mom regens. So basically every three to four months we have to restart our moms. We take clones off the genetics. Uh, we keep them here until they have the correct architecture, size, and structure to be able to make it into the, the final mom room. And then they're the source of our future cuts. Got it. And you've got enough capacity here for what's gonna be your future flower plants? Right, so the rest of the capacity is for uh, production, right? So we can hold about three rooms in here, so we've got a lot of capacity. Uh, and these plants sit here for another two weeks before they actually make their way into the flower rooms. So this room is broken down right now, so I'm thinking you just turned a room and just repopulated a room, so now this is getting, I don't know, dialed, dialed in, cleaned up, and then turned, and you'll have plants in here in the next few days? Yeah, that's right. We just harvested on Friday, uh, so we actually plan on transplanting today and tomorrow. So we're gonna go through a little bit of a cleanup process and get this all basically restarted over and have the next rooms vegging out. Cool, so tell me a little bit about the cleaning process that you guys use here. Sure, so uh, we use a lot of the BioSafe products. I've been using uh, BioSafe products my entire career, uh, specifically the Zerotol 2.0, Sanidate 5.0. Uh, so as soon as we came out to Arizona, one of the first things that I did was get into contact with them, get into contact with their Arizona rep, Zach, who I'm now working with out here, and making sure that right from the get-go we're already stocked up with everything that we need. Um, we use their products in almost every way possible, right? So we make sure that our irrigation water is sanitized uh, between rooms, we sanitize surfaces with it, we spray our plants with the Zerotol to prevent any fungal diseases from uh, you know, starting up or sp spreading. We started out very clean and we've been able to maintain it that way um, in big part due to their products and what they've been able to help us do. Um, it's just a fantastic line of products and all the chemistry that they have. Uh, designed basically a product for everything. Yeah, super, super clean. I love BioSafe, man. I've been using them for a number of years and basically every client I've ever worked with, I've implemented the BioSafe line along with some other stuff. Everything's very clean here and yeah, thanks to them, we've been able to maintain it that way. Here in Flower Seven, and I'd love to know how your growing methodology has changed over the over the time from when you were a six lighter in a garage yeah. to, to here now. I mean, you're not still growing the exact same way, are you? Pretty much. Really? Yeah, pretty much. We definitely collect more data, and we haven't really started steering the ship by data yet. I don't think that's the key to you know. A lot of people think like, hey, everything big ag just transfers over one to one, and it definitely doesn't. That's pretty much it. We still use the same nutrients, we the same everything that we have since we were, you know, six years ago when we started. Uh, why don't you tell me about, uh, like, maybe what's one of the, your long-term nutrient products that that's like really hits home? House with you? and Garden. That's you know, we've been using House and Garden since the start. We've tried every single nutrient company there is. Full stop. Yeah, big shout out to my boy Todd. He's the guy that brought him oh, over yeah. from home. Shout Holland. out to Todd. Shout out to Todd. So how does the size of this room compare to some of the rooms that you have, let's say, in your California operation? Connected and Alien Labs in California, we don't share a space, so we have separate spaces. Sure. And this is about the size of the Alien Labs rooms, but it's like probably a quarter of the size of the Connect room. So the Connect rooms can get up to 120 lights. I think there's 40 in here. What's really insane is that room, you'd think that the quality would be 
lesser because there's more lights and uh, but really at that that um, specific facility is like our most consistent one so okay and so what do you do to uh, keep your employees eyes safe when you're when you're working in these rooms for, uh, we you know, offer a method sevens you know if you're like me and you've been in the industry even growing you know I've been using method sevens for a long time like before right when they came out I remember when we started doing Instagram, I would just I should tell you what though, I'll fucking I'll oh, bring yeah, out you, my camera. You, you hold, hold it up to the to lens. It. Yeah, just so you could really, really get those good those good Instagram shots, Did you know. But then they came out with this little this little uh, device right here, so you put it right oh, on the, your the, phone the, the clip on <laughs> instead, so you can do that. But I used to literally I would just use the, the glasses, but then I started cutting them and I'd try and you know get it on there a little better. And, Jimmy rig this device when right. they came out with it. This thing rules if you're trying to take pictures of your grow room. Well, I'm, I'm sure they it. appreciate you not dismantling their glasses yeah, at this point. Yeah, <laughs> But hey, it's a great use for it, you know? Yeah. Okay, so we're in week seven and we've got this amazing canopy here. Uh, you've got at least two or three layers of uh, what appears to be common culture trellis. Yeah. Um, is that is that st standard practice for you? Yeah, two to three layers? Yeah, three layers. Um, this looks like maybe it was Put on a little late, so uh, there's only two. But typically, we'd want three for sure. So, Ted, tell me a little bit about uh, when you break down a room after a harvest and how you turn that room. Yeah, so we break down. We take, we chop the plants. They go uh, whole. Then we clean the trays. We uh, we use a product called Procure G. Yeah, I'm, I'm super familiar with Procure. It's part of my IPM program, oh, hell yeah. and it basically gets up into everything, all the nooks and the crannies. Yeah, yeah. just to really get rid of anything that might be in there. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So since we're doing some comparisons, I'm interested in learning environmentally what's different and how are you adapting? Yeah, you know, uh, in Arizona you need more AC. With more AC comes more dehumidification. So um, we follow the BPD chart pretty well here, and uh, it was. A learning experience, you know. We came into Arizona and we were like, "Oh, we know how to do this." And then we had three days where the AC couldn't cool down the room because it was 125. We've never stopped learning here, you know. And that's all this is to us: is a new challenge to overcome, a new environment to learn. We started growing in garages in Redding, California, where it's 120 in the summer anyway, you know. So it's not too much of a difference. We got our start growing OG. That's a temperamental girl, and now it just seems like, you know we can pretty much get anything dialed in after that. Well, there's actually no testing standards here in Arizona. So like you can put whatever you want out. And in California, we have like the strictest st standards in the nation. So totally. we just use the exact same thing we use in California. I assume Except so. Except everything's the same. It's clean, great flower, pure flower, you know, nothing in there. So If it ain't broke, don't fix don't it. Don't fix it, right. It's the only cool thing I'll say about metric, right, in California is that it gave us a real big insight into our dead zones in the room. Um, and I think, like, we didn't know this, but Quest will just come and kind of, like, tell you where to put them at first. You know sure. what I mean? But it's cool. Quest came out. They kind of said, hey, you should put them here, 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 and here. We did it. Yeah, this facility is one of the best performing in regards to humidity control and, you know, being able to raise it, lower it, whatever you want. All right, Ted. So now we've got a slightly different vantage point on this room. It looks really sweet up here. Nice, tight, even canopy all the way across. And, of course, from here, I can see your Quest unit. Oh yeah. These are the, the 205, 205, 205 yeah. units. You got four of them in this room, if I'm not mistaken. I think you could probably call it an industry standard. Yeah, it's a, definitely an industry standard. I mean, I nine out of 10 grow rooms I go into have a Quest in them. Um, even if they have like inline in dehumidification, they still supplement with Quest. And man, the reliability of them just spoke for themselves. Like if we find a product, we don't really swap it out unless you know we find a reason to. So we stuck with our same lights, same you know a few core components that never changed. And totally. Quest is one of them. Quest so. is one of them, yeah, for sure. So I know that you guys have just expanded into Arizona, and I actually saw John from Quest earlier. He's here with us today for filming. We're gonna talk to them a little bit. He's also gonna uh, consult on our expansion. So um, he's gonna be even more helpful, to, like from the very beginning from the get-go, so it'll be really nice to get those in the right spot. Yeah, it's great to, to, to build your rooms and have the have the input from the from the source. Yeah, if you can't beat that. All day I dream of brown shrimp. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
brilliant. Thank you. Enjoy your shrimp. Cheers. John, it's really good to see you again. Uh, it's been about a year since we've seen each other. Yeah, MJ Biz Vegas. Yes, 100%. So uh, I spent the day uh, with Ted and his crew here at Alien and Connected talking about uh, their existing facility uh, as well as their future expansion. Yeah, yeah, actually uh, Ted and I were talking about potentially using the IQ equipment of ours for, the, for their expansion. Will you tell me a little bit about the IQ equipment? Because I think it's different than what they've got in this phase one. Yeah, sure. In phase one, it's all of our standalone equipment that most people, I think, are used to. Uh, industry leading efficiency, reliability. Um, but the IQ equipment is a little different in that it's, it's the full environment control. It's uh, heating, cooling, and dehumidification uh, under one system. It's usually, you know, here's our Quest dehumidification, here's our HVAC, and it's, they're, they're completely independent. Uh, and I would think that tying these things together through one piece of architecture makes it easier to monitor these things. So, and this is something that you guys have had now live for about a year or so? Yeah, yeah, a little bit over that actually. Um, we've got some of our, some of the biggest facilities in, in the nation using our IQ equipment. It's kind of uh, the next level uh, e evolution, if you will, of grow room control. John, it was really cool running into you here. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I really am a huge fan of Quest, and I'm really looking forward to uh, learning more about this IQ. Yeah, it's good seeing you, Cameron. All right, brother, be Thanks. good. So Caleb, I noticed that we're now here in drying and there's a lot of things I want to talk to you about. Let's uh, first talk about your whole plant drying methodology. It, the intent is to not touch the buds at all. Hang it upside down, the outer fan leaves protect the buds while they're drying, um, protects the trichomes, and they're expiring all the time. The more you touch them, the more they can expire. So we found that this way um, creates the slowest, driest cure and also keeps intact the look and smell of the buds the best. How many days is it gonna spend here drying before it starts to get uh, handled again and processed? Uh, depending on the strain, it can go anywhere from seven to nine days. And if the plants aren't ready, the product's not gonna be the absolute best it can be for the consumer. So we've gone into situations where we have to bump things a day, two, three days. We will do whatever we have to do to work with the plant. She's in charge. Right, so quality over quantity, quality over everything. A hundred percent of the time. What are, uh, what, what's one of the strains that we're looking at here? Is there something that catches your eye? Yeah, this is Shirbaccio. It turned out excellent this round. This facility is just putting out some of the best flower. Um, it's got perfectly even purple to green ratio. Like for strains that turn purple, it's really important that they have the right ratio. If they don't get a certain level of purple, which isn't an indicator of quality, but it's what people like to see, mm -hmm. then it won't meet the ex expectations of the consumer. Sure. So this nailed it. You're looking for dark almost all the way through. 80% purple, 20% green, give or take. Can I, can I get in here and get my nose yeah, on that? Yeah, please Thank do. You. It's one of my favorite alien strains for sure. One of their classics, it's here to stay. Um, I can't stress the importance of the proper dry and cure. I mean, you can grow some of the best weed in the world and completely destroy ruin it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I've seen it happen with other cultivators time and time again, um, particularly at scale. That's one of the things that Connected and Alien has done a fantastic job is scaling quality. Well, Caleb, you're obviously maintaining the quality through your dry and I'm wondering if uh, we can go check out trimming from here. Let's do it, they're trimming up some stuff right now. All right, let's do it. Super, super simple. Not overpowered with anything, just that little, little, little twist of lemon. It's friggin' grape with a little, little mayo, toasted bun. Absolutely delicious.
So Caleb, here we are down in your trim area, and I'm wondering if you can give me some thoughts on your process, your people, the throughput, and so on. We call this Trim Alley. Trim Alley. Rightfully right. so. Um, one thing that's unique about this team is in Arizona, all people on site are required to be uh, employees. Sure. Um, whereas we use farm labor contractors, so this team does a ton of different projects. We do everything by hand here. Every step in the dry and trim and cure process, you can damage the product significantly. So they're, I mean, they're treating it like little mini bonsai trees. <laughs> Um, so that leads me to, uh, you guys are using trim bins? Yeah, yeah, it's a product we picked up about, I think about four years ago. Um, and they're super convenient, they're easy for the workers to use, and then they've got the screen inside. So the trichomes drop below, you can, we collect it for use, you can make rosin with it. Um, other manufactured products, um, sometimes we get so much of it built up, we'll send it off for, to another manufacturer to utilize in a collab or something. Sure, and your people probably like the, uh, the ergonomics of it, right? So they, you know, because they're a lot like a, like a restaurant bus tub, but they've got that sort of recessed part for your, for your arms to sit down in. Yeah. Ever since we introduced them uh, from California to Arizona, everyone only wants to work with those. Got it. Got it. Okay, so after your product gets trimmed, it's going to get stored somehow. Why, why don't you tell me about that? So, you know, for years we've been dealing with the same standard issue turkey bag. It's pretty much the only real option on the market. But since we've grown and we've and we've scaled we really needed something a little bit more dependable and so we discovered Grove bags after sending our team out said get every bag get samples of every bag on the market we tested it in our cold storage um, we tested it in our dry storage and we measured moisture content and then good old-fashioned nose test mm -hmm. and uh, the Grove bags uh, are the ones that have stood aside for sure from all the other ones so one of the features of the bag that Jack mentioned when I met him was the, the turp lock feature of the bag. And I, I see that you're going back to that too, the way that it sort of uh, maintains that integrity with regards to the nose and the bag appeal of the product. Yeah, throughout its cycle, from the time it gets put into the bag, it's gonna, we usually put it directly into cold storage, not freezing, but cold storage. And then it's going to get transferred and it's going to live in different um, temperature and climates. So what can't change is the moisture content inside the bag and the terpenes. When those start expiring, quality goes down, value goes down, the whole story. So sure. um, wh whatever it's called that they're using, it's working. Yeah. So what does your typical throughput look like here? Uh, like what are these guys doing in let's say one, one week? Um, so the trimmers can do, you know, uh, their best day is about 30 pounds. Um, and, but it's on average about 20, 25 pounds a day. Okay. Well, Caleb, I really appreciate you showing me your trim alley and all the fine work your employees are doing. Can you show me what's next? Yeah, let's go check out packaging. What did we get? What were these things? Hey, watch. What are these things? Those are prickly pears. Prickly pears. I got to figure out prickly pears because I don't know anything about prickly pears. Dude, yeah, prickly pear good. ice cubes. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I bet that'd be great with vodka. <laughs> Come a come a come a come a chameleon. I'm sure we cannot get the rights for the song. <laughs> Isn't this in the public domain yet? <laughs> So I'm here with Jace and Cody, uh, and I'm really interested in learning about how uh, you guys came to be involved with Connected and Alien. Sure, so I'm Jace Little. I spent three years in the uh, Arizona and Nevada cannabis marketplace. In June, I moved out here to help them launch. I had previously been in Arizona launching another cannabis brand two years ago, so I kind of knew what the expectations were. 
yeah, handle operations and supply chain for the last six months. Yeah, my name's Cody Mann. I'm uh, the brand manager for the state of Arizona. I've had my medical card since the inception of the law many years ago. Uh, since then, I've worked for a few local dispensaries. Uh, from there, I got into wholesale, uh, two different dispensaries. That's where I met the Connected and Alien Labs guys around Arizona. Um, jumped at it, uh, and I've been working for them uh, ever since. So it's, it's been a good run, and uh, we're, we're really happy with it. Yeah, I, I would imagine so. I've met a ton of cool people today. I've seen some really great product, and now I'm looking at all this killer packaging. Sure, yeah. So these are mirrored with exactly the packaging that our California uh, team uses. These are from Green Rush. We take a lot of pride in these kind of be an extension of the quality of our products, right? So, um, and then you still see kind of the different kind of brain ideologies, right? Alien Labs is kind of more of the space, the focus on being different. Sure. Um, so a lot of the green, purple kind of galaxy and then connected is more of your, you know, trademark California weed, designer weed look. It looks really, really sharp. Who did you say the, the manufacturer is? So Green Rush Packaging. Green Rush Packaging and yeah. Green Rush is who, uh, connected in aliens using in California. This is a relationship that you guys Correct. have had for a while. I'd say they supply about 70% of our soft good packaging needs. Is it, and is it just the card stock or is it also the, the jars and the- A lot of the jars, the master cases behind us. Uh, we get anything that has to do with our packaging. Um, we get even our, our bulk packaging for when we do like trim, things like that. Um, so we don't we don't cut any corners. I mean, even in the inside of the box, you know. Yeah, dude, that's Super sweet. fancy, oh yeah. yeah. We've got yeah. great designers that we work with, um, in-house team up north in California. Um, they do fantastic stuff. Yeah, even Green the, Rush uh, also supplies our uh, gummy bag as well. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks super, super clean. Yep. Super yeah, sharp. and the dispensaries love it. Um, again, like he said, it just makes it easier for intake. It looks good, um, it stays on brand. Um, and just shows that we don't cut corners where you know it comes to anything, including packaging. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So do you guys want to show me a little bit of the packaging that goes on over sure. here? Yeah, Let's definitely. Go. Our trimmers and packagers have a dynamic role. So they'll trim, turn around, package a few days later. We'll weigh out a pound for each person. That box will get brought to this middle table where it'll go through an extensive QC. So in each one of these lids, there's already one of these induction seals inside. It also keeps our weed uh, that much more fresh. Um, the second step will be this tamper seal. That seal not only makes sure that it's untampered with, but that you got it straight from the source. You're not getting a third party, uh, it's coming straight from us. That's awesome. All right, Jace, Cody, I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you Cameron. so much for showing me yeah, what you guys are doing. Thank you so much here. for coming by. I'm loving the quality. I'll be out on the streets <laughs> look, look, looking for mine. Yeah, Thank for you, sure. appreciate it. All right, be good. This lens does compress things nicely. It is. Are you talking about my head? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he likes to compress his head. I'm Cameron. I'm Amy. I'm the marketing manager for the West Coast for Harvest. Hi, Amy. It's great to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as well. So I was just over at Connected and Alien, and they said that I could stop by here and check out some of their products. Awesome. Well, we're so glad you're here. I actually just stopped by myself, too. I heard you guys were here filming, so it was just a great time to stop by. Yeah, well, in that case, I'd love to get a little bit of the backstory on Harvest, Absolutely. since I bet you know that. Yes, definitely. We are just so excited to have Connected and Alien Labs in Arizona. Um, Harvest has six different states that we operate in, okay. and in Arizona, we have 15 stores, and we're the largest largest dispensary chain in Arizona. Awesome. And we also have a handful of cultivation licenses here too. Okay, okay, and now this relationship with Alien and Connected, you said that's been going on now. It took a little bit of time to get them here. Then you it got did. them here, and then they had to actually like grow their first harvest. It, so this must have yes. been going on for about a year. It was, it was. It's been a year long process, and it was just really awesome to be able to have their actual growers from California. They actually moved to Arizona so that the product quality was up to the standards that they were used to in California. Got it. Yep, got yep. It. So we launched on Friday, okay. and in nine of our harvest locations, okay. and we had lines out the door before open. The patients who came in, they really knew about Alien Labs and Connected, and they were so excited to be able to purchase it. And then we actually had new patients who hadn't heard about Alien Labs and Connected also purchase. All right. So it was just really, really fantastic. So day. well well received by the Very public? Very well received. Almost sold out on Friday. And okay. then again, we had a great lines on Saturday, too. Cool. Well, why don't you tell me either, I don't know, maybe your favorites or maybe what the sure. most popular with your, with yeah, your patients? Yeah, definitely. So the ones that I've tried that I absolutely love is Biscotti, okay. um, which has also been popular with the, our patients okay. as well. 
well. Um, Gelato 41, which is another one that's sure. been very popular. And then I would say that the one that kind of had the buzz that everybody wanted was um, Galactic Gas, okay. just because it was a very unique strain. Okay, so are all of those available for me today? They are, they are. We have very limited left, but you are here on a good day. We have all right. some left. <laughs> all right, sweet, well let's all do right. it. And then also the gummies, they're a nanotechnology gummy, so they're fantastic and the flavor is very good. What does the nanotechnology mean? So nanotechnology, it just it, it absorbs quicker. So Got instead it. of it taking a couple hours to absorb once you eat it, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm super interested in trying that. Awesome. Well, let's get you going. All right. We're so glad you stopped in. You've got to come back. Thank it was you. nice to meet you. Nice to meet Have you a too. good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. We're about to try this shibashio out. Yeah, I, I think know. that's what's rolled up in both of ours. Very yeah. gassy. Super gassy. This is real quality bud right here. Did, did I hear that you play instruments or maybe your your My younger brother uh, plays instruments. Um, I also make music myself. Um, I don't push it as much as I should. Cool. All the time, I recorded some songs a couple weeks ago. What's your favorite type of food though? Like, like just for you or, and then like when you smoke? Can't go wrong with uh, any Mexican food, really. Um, You're in the right place for that. Oh my that. God, we've had like Mexican food yeah. like three times You're since we've right been here. <laughs> since I got into yeah. town, and that was like two days ago. So I'm spoiled. Place. I get home cooked meals, Boom. Mexican hey. food, so. Boom. Hey. Boom. Boom. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the after party place, at JoJo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, mixed greens for a salad. We're gonna do some yellow heirloom, carrot and radish for the salad. Uh, and then the pasta, we're doing the gemelli, which is uh, some po fresh pasta that we got at the farmer's market with shrimp and zucchini. Like every time you need a sharp knife, you just buy a new knife. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Cool. All right, you guys. We're done. What is everybody eating? I feel like you guys always gotta be filming, like when everyone's hanging out eating. Wow, nice play. I notice you're not filming. You got watch on the camera. Nice. Well, the, the end's important. You gotta. If you're gonna film you gotta cooking, mm -hmm. you gotta have eaten. Then it's just a culmination. 